crazy at the moment. Still taking the apple cider vinegar? I am, man. You're like one of I just this actually, guy actually got I, into I that. Actually just, drink it. I just took it. my apple cider vinegar right before you guys showed up. How do you how drink it? You, you drink it? I do two full spoons of of apple cider, and then I do a, a little splash of cranberry juice. Yeah, and then I do um, some organic lemon juice from That's Sprouts. Cool, and. Uh, in October, it makes it one whole year that I've been doing it every day. That's pretty good. Yeah. You look good. What are, too, what are some benefits that you've achieved from that? Um, <clears throat> I I feel like my digestion is a lot better. Um, I used to, I mean, I, I still kind of do, but I suffer from heartburn. Um, and even though you're taking an acid, which which is like a... Try to hold the mic up to your... Like, an, like, like, an, your like an acid, yeah. you know, like... Reflux, Re, you know, but it helps with the reflux. It helps keep the the acids down. Well, it, it it's kind of counterintuitive, right? Because right. it's acidic, it's a high pH, yeah. yeah. But it, it makes your body more alkaline, yeah. Right? Yeah, I, I think it also makes you absorb um, minerals and vitamins better mm. as well. Mm. Um, it dilutes proteins, so you don't they don't um, you, they don't get all like hard inside your intestines and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you're able to like digest stuff better and it goes through. <laughs> Years ago, I did that, like the cayenne pepper and lemonade, like Ooh. the sort of like a three day thing, but yeah. I couldn't get through it. It made me feel like <clears throat> created weird shit in my body. And I'm like, I can't, I'm not going to do this. I worked right. with a guy that took cayenne pills. You got it like sprouts mm -hmm. or something every day. He swore by it. I got, uh, I used apple cider vinegar two weeks ago when I got stung by a yellow jacket. Oh, I looked wow. it up online. They said, rub it on there to, for the itching and pain. I did and I had no pain, but oh. it started itching way later. But I've heard a lot about that. Yeah. It also, what it supposed, well, I, I started using it off of um, a suggestion from my brother. He sent me a YouTube video of this, this guy named Dr. Berg. These guys are getting down on some botchy oh, cornhole. They here. get down on cornhole around here. I just told him I never heard of cornhole until I moved to Colorado. And oh, it was right. like a call in Denver, a college Oh, is that town. what it's called? The Bo game? Isn't it botchy ball? Or that's no, cornhole. that's cornhole. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know. See, I didn't even know what you're talking about then. <laughs> I was like, you, it, you never heard of cornhole? It's like. Uh, we don't play those games here. <laughs> some other time. <laughs> just, I need more liquor. <laughs> Bocce ball is those fields we were at in Vista. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's like yeah. lawn bowling. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, they, they have those at my work. They actually our new our new building. They built um, cornholes uh, stations, and then also like bocce ball um, courts. I guess. I, what do you call them? Sand fields. <laughs> fields. Wait, so Arenas. bocce ball is when you throw the bo the ball. That's lawn bowling, like where there's and then you try to get it closest to like the rings. Like you're supposed to get in. There's different color. I don't know the full rules. Don't quote me on this. Okay. Yeah. But that's cornhole. I know that as a drinking college game. Yes. And, well, sounds like it. <laughs> but it's fun. My parents bought one for their RV, and they, they whip it out. And no, it looks fun. I've played it before. It's touch. It's a, it's a yeah. touch, it's a, man. I've yeah. seen professionals, like like professional leagues on TV. Really? Like full on, like, <laughs> i <I'm> serious. <laughs> We're all serious about serious. it. It's like, legit. Baby powder. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> But anyways, I was asking about the yeah apple cider vinegar. Oh yeah, I was uh, doing that before too. Uh, and I just what recently. It, what I I mean I, I don't know it it basically like uh, it pH balances your blood. Yeah, I think so it alkalizes it. it right? Yeah, so it um I feel like my my uh, sugars sugar is better. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like my my blood pressure is better. Mm -hmm. um so we learned just overall i i feel like when i drink water they, they suggest not to drink alkaline water when you're on the on the you know taking this stuff because you don't need it this yeah. this will do it for well, you Well, you could probably you want to balance right you don't want to get obviously yeah, too alkaline wanna, either so um i actually like when i drink water now i feel like i actually get hydrated. quench my yeah. thirst you're really hydrated like i yeah. absorb it better Hmm. For some reason. And I don't know if it's just my mind or what. Well, there's probably something to that. We'll go into the chain reaction here. We learned the, the pH thing. 
Um, that can be modulated through breath as well. And then that will affect the pH level in your blood. So it's not like the you're drinking, what's the volume? Uh, I drink uh, like a, I don't know, a half a glass of water. Okay. And the apple put, cider vinegar. And I put two um, large tablespoons. Yeah. And then I, but I over pour sometimes, most of the okay. time. And then I do one tablespoon of organic lime juice and then uh, a, just a, ta- a dash of cranberry juice for taste. Um, does it? Have you gotten a stomachache at all? From doing no. It ever? S- sometimes, I mean, it's it's kind of rough to handle. Like I, I, I do that crazy face with any beer I drink. But this stuff, <laughs> it's like beer face? the the IPA. My friend calls it IPA face. She's all, whoa, that yeah. one was rough. <laughs> but uh, this one, I mean, at first it is, and I've gotten to the point where I can deal with it. But yeah, the first few seconds after you take it, you're like, because I shoot it. I don't like sip it or right. whatever. I shoot that stuff. Wait, do you mix it? With, you mix it with water. water. Right? Yeah, he's oh, making a cocktail. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I tried to do it straight a long time ago, and that's a bad idea. I, I've I've actually tossed it a couple times when I was like, "Wait, did I did I put a vinegar in that? Let me just try it again." And I put more in, and I yeah. I shot it back, and I must have. Yeah. My stomach went nope. Yeah, it's I've had some pretty up. bad stomach, like an empty stomach with that. Yeah, yeah, one time I was doing, I was really into juicing, and I did garlic. I juiced garlic, yeah, straight, and ginger straight. Oof! And I took a shot of it. That was it. Literally felt like it was burning a hole through my stomach. Oh man! Yeah, I was what? making kombucha for several that's years. That's really good for you too. And it, that's a, a symbiotic culture of of yeast and bacteria. That's what the SCOBY acronym stands for. And if you let it go too long, it's <laughs> an acronym. SCOBY, S-C-O-B-I, um, symbiotic culture of bacteria, um, and Y. It's, not a, it's a Y, not an I. Sorry. Bacteria and yeast. Yeah. And if you let it go too long, it turns to vinegar. And there's people that will use it for their salad dressing. And I'm, I'm sure you can drink it in the same yeah. way. And I've, I've tasted it personally, and it, I don't see a problem with it. No, I was just laughing because... That was our first, uh, right. our second podcast, Americans love acronyms, because it's like everything's got to be a damn acronym. <laughs> I never heard that before, but now I can't hear ne- it. I never so. knew that. The SCOBY, I thought that was just what the scientific name for it or something. Nope. It's black tea, and then you put uh, the sugar in there, and then the, the yeast, and they, they build like a, th- have you ever seen a SCOBY? Yes. You've yeah, showed it looks me like before. looks like skin. Yeah. But what is apple cider vinegar actually, what is it? Is it from apples? Yeah, it's like a culture, like they so ferment fermented. apples. Yeah, yeah, and then the stuff on the bottom, they call it the mother, right? Mm-hmm. Now that's supposed to be really good. Oh, for okay, you so too. you're out, you same thing then. I bet that is mm-hmm. coming from. There's a scoby in there. Is that an acronym too? Is mother an acronym? <laughs> the mother. It's I like, think that's what they call it, right? The yeah, mother. The yeah, mother. yeah. That's it's on the bottle. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's right. Okay. It's a brag. Yeah. My Brad friend Fred actually met her, the girl in the bottle. Oh, really? She told him not, that you should not cross your legs. It's bad for you when you're sitting. She said really? it cuts off your circulation. Mm, interesting. That's what the squatty potty's for, too, right? I know. I need to get one of those. Just a Seriously. Well, you know <laughs> why the squatty toilet potty? was invented, right? Why it's, it's called the throne? To <laughs> no, this is high. the real story. You heard this, right? This is a health thing with your bowels, actually. Yeah. yeah. But the throne or the uh, toilet was invented because it was for like an actual king and he was too fat to, you know, because they probably just like shit in a hole or something like that. Like they still do in a lot of countries. Mm. And uh, he was so fat that he couldn't do that. So they made a toilet for him. So that's why it's called the throne. The more you know. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> This is what we're all about. Bro science. Weird. Yeah, it's bro, bro science. science. I'm weird. probably making it up. Yeah. Like, is that true? I've heard it somewhere. Google it. They, somebody or somebody your research. probably made it up. <laughs> the throne makes sense, though. I, I get sure, it. Sure, why not? But I we'll thought it was for rich. Because I've seen the old Roman bathrooms. And they used to eat, no toilet paper, but they would have a shared I don't, sponge. I don't, know, I don't know if I could live in that era, man. <laughs> like, I'm glad I didn't. Like, I think they were a lot cleaner like, than people think. I mean, like, they had running water. even nowadays, if you go to like India... Um, there's, I mean, like, it's there's just a, a shit on whole, the streets, yeah. no, they're just, and you know why Indian people don't shake with the, with the right hand? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Well, they, that's common in a lot of countries. I, I didn't, I, I was yeah. like shocked when yeah. I. And it, if you eat with your right hand, that's like, oof. 
Like, that's <laughs> bad. Well, you know why in Africa, that's one of the things that the uh, warlord guys will do is they'll chop your left hand off. And because if you ha- don't have a left hand, you can't eat with people. Right. Like you'll like it's almost like you'll be shunned from the entire like tribe or whatever if you don't have a, a left hand to eat with. So you can't eat with them because you're eating with your shit hand. I've heard the yakuza will chop off segments of your fingers. Well, that's if you want out. Well, if you if do you- something wrong, even like they they do it to signify how many mistakes you make. Oh uh, yeah, probably. And it starts with each you segment. Have to do it yourself. Like, you got too. some. Oh, that'd be wow! I bet you do. They break you got, like, three you chances. On no, no, I know. If you want out, <laughs> if you yeah. want out of the yakuza, you have to do it yourself, and then you have to present it to the boss, and then he could say yes or no. Okay. So he could be like, "Nah, you're still a yakuza, even though you cut your own finger off." Japanese are intense, man. Like the harikari to preserve your family's yourself, honor, but yeah. even though you stab yourself in the gut in a kneeling position. To preserve your family's honor, if you say if you fall over, they're Fail. like, "Sorry, <laughs> do it again." <laughs> Sick. In your next life. Yeah. Well, the kamikaze <laughs> things to me were that was pretty amazing. Only too. the Japanese, yeah. You know they were all in meth too, right? Well, that was the thing. No, they were the pilots. The well, com- that whole era was wasn't <laughs> pretty much. I mean, but I mean, especially the, the kamikazes and the Germans. He did talk about the that. Germans. Yeah. They were all. I think up it was the meth. era. They were all happily applied. It, it wasn't like <laughs> dirty meth a, like nowadays. It was more like, off. it was like <laughs> in pill form. Yeah, it was. So it was yeah. legit, yeah. you know? Like <laughs> so. There were advertisements. It was like when you're depressed, they would give you amphetamines. So Yeah. Different times. Didn't the Nazis create it or something? The Germans, chemists created a lot of that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think I mean, they created uh, MDMA too also. And yeah, it was Swiss. They put wasn't, it, wasn't it Swiss like Sandoz? No, that was LSD. It was Merck. That Merck created. and Sandoz, they were in the chemical industry yeah. way back, but Merck, 1900s. Merck first created MDMA, and then they put it on the shelf. They were like, useless. <laughs> 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 I forget what they were trying to do. And then somebody one day like found it. Like, well, Alexander <laughs> Sasha, Shulgin, yeah. Sasha Shulgin found it, yeah. And he was like, useful. <laughs> <laughs> Two years Whoa. later. <laughs> yeah. Declassified. Yeah. Well, that's he basically started rapes, too, in a way. Like, he would just invite all of his friends, and he would synthesize these uh, compounds, and like, okay. outside of San Francisco. And, you know, he knew all these friends that were, like, you know, really smart people. Like, a lot of them are therapists and stuff. Like his wife, Ann Shulgin, she was a therapist. And they would just, anything that, you know, first he would try it on himself and then uh, he'd give it to his wife and they'd do it together. And then if they thought that it was something that people would like, they'd have a party of about oh, like, wow. they had like this certain group of people. It was like, all right, bring in the brigade. It was like, yeah. it was like yeah. Barry's t- test story. Well, he was a legitimate test scientist. Yeah. He was actually um, he for Dow being chemical. bankrolled by the government. It was Dow, Dow Chemical. Yeah. I have two of the Bibles he produced on this. One, one's called P-Call and T-Call. And the T-Call is, it's an acronym again. T-Call, yeah. tryptamines, I know and love. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then P-Call phenethylamines. phenethylamines, or, I know and love. There's two different ways to say it, yeah. Yeah, and LSD is included in the tryptamines, right. and DMT. But then he goes into the ketamines and the speed. Yeah, and the phenyl, phenylethylamines, or however you say it, that's like all derivatives of uh, mescaline. And that's what MDMA is and 2CB and all that. It's like really close to mescaline. Yeah. And mescaline is actually, I think, an amphetamine, which makes sense because also MDMA, well, the MA is meth- when you When you say that, though, it, that's just it's referring a big class. to a chemical bond. Yeah. Right. And it doesn't actually... It's I'm not. not don't want to even get it doesn't, close to a tweaker thing. No, 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 you don't well, tweak <laughs> MDMA. You, you don't really tweak. Grind your I mean, I can, I can you can if you take a lot. It yeah. definitely has that effect, but nothing like meth, you know. But it's totally. It's still different. But uh, yeah, so they would have these parties at their house, and then remember we did that song. It was the very first MDMA trip report. And I just oh, he remember started reading it. Yeah, we just did. It was when I had my, I was renting that uh, cello okay. and we did the, that. Uh, I was playing synthesizer. I made like yeah. a, a loop and then he made a cello loop and then he, he picked up the, the P call book, found his trip report for the first, it was the first him MDMA and his wife's trip. Um, trip report of MDMA and he just started reading it. So I, I have that clip. Yeah, And it was like a uh, tingling sensation in my fingers and toes. 
feels like something significant is about to happen. <laughs> Bullseye. <laughs> You're all, just wait. Wait for it. <laughs> and that was before Ecstasy yeah. was even it was even yeah. named that because uh What did he want to I call it at first? Em- empathy. He didn't like the the word ecstasy. He thought it was inaccurate. Yeah. He wanted to call it empathy. empathogen. Yeah. He called them. Yeah. Well, that's even what Well, I mean, that makes it. sense. I mean, mm-hmm. the heart you, turn in, you turn into a softy. Well, I mean, but it does kind of put you in an ecstatic uh, state, you know. Mm-hmm. Very open. Yeah. But, yeah, definitely very open and em- empathic. So, whatever you want. We need it. more of that nowadays. I don't right. say ecstasy. And, you know, you know I, I've heard of all this. You know how, like, they're, they're treating... Um, like for PTSD and stuff yeah, like now naps. with ketamine mm-hmm. and they're treating with uh, like even, even uh, you know, mushrooms and stuff. Um, they were talking to an uh, NPR. They were talking to a guy that was, that was, uh, you know, getting treatment. And he, he said that he did some, he did some mushrooms and he, but I guess they dosed them like very lightly. It was, it was, it was micro dosing kind of. And uh, he said that he, he had felt feelings that he'd never felt. I mean, I was, I'm just sitting there thinking like, yeah, that's the way it is, you know, like, but these people that are traumatized, it, I I believe that it rewires them to remember how, what good feelings are and what, what, how they should feel. And that's you rewire it. Yeah. Instead of getting trapped in the trauma loop. Yeah. You get trapped in this trauma loop where, you know, you're just all, I I mean, I, I don't probably don't even understand, but, um, it's yeah. nice to see that people can, you know, rewire themselves like that. Is that for the MDMA or mushrooms? You, you know, I've, I've heard of, of even ketamine. Ketamine, well, ketamine is only weird. One, technically it's completely right now. legal. Yeah. Ketamine they were talking is... about mushrooms in Oregon and Washington, uh, as being Michigan legal actually yesterday, or, or something, last something, week, they just approved it. Michigan yeah. is, no is way. plant medicine and it's, it's along the lines of decriminalized. Yeah. So like that just. If you read it, I think it just means like there's not going to be a budget to prosecute you. For what exactly though? All plants? plant medicine. So well, that's what um, Oakland. Well, I think Oakland specifically was mushrooms, but then it was like I want to say Santa Cruz or something like that. They did all plant medicines. Nice. Like if it came from a plant, it's decriminalized. I mean, it's it's the same way that weed went. It's just going to happen one state at a time. First, it's going to be decriminalized, and then the maps. What's the acronym? Um, Multidisciplinary Association of Psychedelic Studies. Right. So they're in a phase three trials right now with, what was it, the fast track that they actually invented, like the FDA invented for like AIDS medicine. They actually put it on this like fast track to get it, you know, through the trials. I think they just uh, got their funding too. I think psychedelics should be a required course of study (laughs) in college because honestly, like, Life doesn't begin until you open up your brain a little bit. And in my eyes, like the way I I see things now. I feel sorry for people that have never tripped. It's almost like somebody saying that, oh, no, I've never had sex, but I know what it is and I don't need it. I don't want it. True. Right. Or or I'm too scared to do it. Yeah. Or I'm too, I don't know what's going to happen to me. I'm just going to stay ever. Part of it might be afraid of looking inside. You know, and seeing what you find. I still have yeah, all which, those fears too. I still <laughs> do. it doesn't go away. It either. doesn't go away. I mean, it's just you never know what you're going to find. Yeah, um, it's an endless well for sure. Right. So, but uh, yeah, but you gotta. I was going to tell you for my birthday, um, my buddy Casey got me the ultimate DMT pipe. <laughs> cool. Yeah. The the. I guess they call it's. Is it like the it, machine? It's, it's or something? Machine. Yeah. It's, really? It's like the one that's like shaped like a trumpet it, or saxophone. Yeah, like I'll show it to you. Is it blown time. glass? Or, mm-hmm. Oh, no, I think uh, yeah, my friend. Should it, it has, has like oil it, chamber, right? I don't. I don't. I don't, don't have think a so. little area where it melts. I think so, mm. but it also has like this thing where you can vaporize it and you can heat it and you can come down on it and vaporize it. Oh, like instead of instead of like having direct fire. You know, it's we gotta try it. Work it. good. I haven't tried it yet. Okay, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it's on its way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I've wanted one for a while, and I was like, kind of, you know, they're they're expensive. They're, it wasn't cheap. Yeah, and uh, he comes over the other day, and he's all, <laughs> he has a scratch on it. But here you go, happy birthday. I was like, oh shit, dude. 
I was thinking we should do a podcast where we'll just like do a micro dose before. Oh, that would be awesome. That we were just talking about that today. Adam Adam suggested and Joe suggested that as well. He's like, that's an avenue you guys should explore. A little bit of medicine before, during, or after the podcast. So I like it. I'm open to that. I have microdosed mushrooms prior, you know, to to Paul's, but yeah, I, I don't think they it's that bad. Like when you microdose stuff. It's no, a- I think actually one of the things that are is kind of under talked about is I think microdosing DMT, especially like if you combined it with like meditation or something. I've done that before, and it's actually a really powerful uh, resource for that. I agree. I like like it before sleep, like little tiny puffs, and I just get super relaxed. And there is some evidence they think it's related to dreaming. Well, it's closely related to melatonin. Melatonin is like super it's, similar. It's, yeah. It's, I've had, yeah, very nice experiences. And we brought this up last time. Like, I think all, I, I'm only speaking for ourselves because of last time, but we're only speaking about NN DMT. There is the toad, the 5 MEO. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which we brought up with Jeremiah last time. I've never experienced, but yeah, never. just about everyone that has said they've done that, that is the pinnacle of the DMT experience. And I don't know it yet. Yeah. I think it's different though. It's like a yeah. whole different thing, which is crazy. You could just change one little molecule or not even a molecule. It's like it's very almost close the to, same thing. to psilocybin as well. They're all very similar. Yeah. 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 Yep. Well, well, I've been doing a lot of, like we talked about in the last one, like kind of, well, the meditation, but also combining that, with like the breathing techniques yeah, I was you telling you about. about that. And then uh, I actually got, so I got really into this book we've talked about endlessly. It's called breath or yeah, that was a well, breath, right? The James I thought you were talking about the free, free diving one. Well, that's how I got into okay. it. Right. And then, so it was like this book all about like breathing and stuff and like this crazy, like so much to do with like uh, breathing out of your nose apparently is like, so much better for you. And like all these ancient cultures knew this. Like and that's, have you ever heard sleep, sleep apnea and stuff? Exactly. Yeah. And have you ever heard the expression mouth breather? Like it's mm-hmm. a negative thing. Well, this is like something that's been around for a long time. Like, I guess enough, like some native American tribes, like they would even like they're young, they would like hold their mouth shut. And like, even in Mexico, they were saying like, it used to be in like schools there. If the teacher caught you breathing out of your nose, they'd like whack you in the head. And they'd be like, that's disgusting. Only breathe through your nose. So this is something that's been lost. Yeah. And apparently, like, a lot of health problems today is because of people, like, chronically breathing through their breathing mouth. Wrong. And, and it it's really interesting. What we talked about earlier with that breath actually regulating your pH. Mm-hmm. And then that has, that affects your blood. And then that affects your nutritional uptake and your digestion. So it, it's like this chain reaction. And we're a machine. It kind of makes sense to me. So, and I've been exploring it and I, I do see the effects. So yeah. do your own research on that. But then doing these, like, what is it? The Tumo. And like I've told you about like Wim, Wim Hof, yeah. like these breathing techniques where you could actually, and then let's see this, the Stan Groff one, the holotropic. holotropic breathing. Like yeah. you could actually like, you know, cause DMT is a androgynous brain chemical. It's in your brain. Right. And you could access it through, breath basically and through doing these like breathing techniques he was stanislav Grof was a legendary psychologist and when lsd was legal he was leading thousands of lsd um, sessions and then when it became illegal he developed this breathing technique to achieve the same consciousness i've never we talked about that last time I, it's hard to believe that i could get to an lsd state through breathing but there's a whole tribe of people that say otherwise i mean i think it would be different like from what i've been experiencing though and then well also leading out to this other book that this guy wrote actually before this one the path that he kind of found out about all this breathing stuff is he tried to do a a, he's like a journalist this guy james james nestor and he did a book about free diving and that shit is a trip because like there's like stories of have you heard of those like Japanese women? They're like pearl divers, and they always like dive naked and stuff, or they used to tra- traditionally. And like there's stories of them like diving underwater for 45 minutes on one breath. What? Yeah. 
That's crazy. And so there's this thing though, like, because, uh, they call it the mammalian, um, reflex reflex. And even if you just splash cold water on your face, you could hold your breath longer. And so like, there's like this change that they call the master switch. Right. And that's why these people are going down to like these free divers, like 500 feet down and back on one. But breath. doesn't it, doesn't it, don't you get the, the, it's not the bends, the, the bends. nitrous. That's well, if you yeah. come up too fast. And then I guess that's worse if you, if you're scuba diving too, you're breathing the compressed air and that's a coming up thing. I realized yeah. this is not some, this is something you work yourself up to. Like, but magician. apparently anybody can do it. Yeah. That's the cool thing about it. Like anybody can do it. And so I got into this, right? And then I got this app where you, What are you up to now? Two and a half minutes. I can hold my breath two and a half minutes now. It's pretty damn good. And it's I've only been doing it for like a week and a half. And apparently you can get up to like four minutes pretty easily. Because at a certain point, because when you hold your breath, apparently like you get that feeling like you have to breathe. That's actually not from a lack of oxygen. That's from excess CO2, which is not necessarily bad, like in short, like for a short time period, but you could train your body to get used to that. And it takes a lot to actually lose oxygen. That's why these people, they train themselves and they can hold their breaths for like many minutes at a time. But they they call this thing the master switch where you could dive down or, you know, you train your body to where I guess your spleen uh, releases oxygen and the way they explained it, like it's like the most euphoric thing ever. And I think that it's not just releasing oxygen. I think your brain, because for the sport of free diving, which is actually like a really extreme sport, people die doing this shit. Yeah. Like they're not messing around and they come up frequently, like blood coming out of their ears and their nose. Like their whole head yeah. And they have to like, they're like yelling in their ear, like breathe, breathe, like all this shit. Like it's really intense. Yeah. Right. But it's cool because it's like hardcore meditation because that's all of them say that's what it comes down to is your mental state. That's what's so mm. cool about it. So I've been doing this app, right? Like every day, like at least well, on my breaks at work before I go to bed. I mean, I can hold my breath. I'll do a minute, you know, of breathing and then a minute breath hold and then a minute of breathing, a minute of breath hold. I'll just go on like this for like 10 minutes. And I do that every single break at my work. But I'm telling you, I've even just today, like reaching these like crazy states of just seeing like the flower of life and like even like almost like entities, dude, like tripping balls on, on like at work too. Mind, the mind is a powerful thing. It's crazy though. You get into this state and I could feel if I'm going to be able to hold my breath longer or not just by my mental state going in. And, uh, so what I do is I try to visualize like a faucet, right? So you're my normal thought pattern. I think of it like the faucet on all the way. And then I try to think of it like, you know, sometimes you turn the faucet off and it's a quiet house and you hear the drops, but it goes like less and less and less. And I don't know. It's just like a mental kind of technique that, that works for me. Yeah, totally. I mean, but it's I visualization. Mean, I mean, Two and a half minutes is, I'm pretty proud of that. Time. I'm actually surprised that I was able to do that like, yeah. consistently. You know who else did a lot of uh, uh, deep diving? Um, like the Mayas and the Incas and all those all those guys. I saw I saw this ritual where where this guy would like dive into these, hole, these big hole, I guess, you know, sinkholes or whatever. And would go all the way down to the bottom with just, you know, one breath. And it was long, it was far far i don't know how far but it was like some some ritual where they would go to all the way down and then all the way back didn't up. they find those whole like kind of layer, yeah almost like cities down there and yeah just, like that could have been just something must have been down there man I've, I've seen those yeah Aliens. it seems like because like in that book it even talks about like the vedics and stuff or i think it was the vedics like they knew about this stuff it was like a whole culture just based on breathing basically like that was their whole thing aliens I mean, that's probably where it came from. Um, you know. Well, yeah. we are evolved from probably like the sea, something in the sea. So there, there's this breathing. It's probably very important to our biology. Well, I mean, every <laughs> evolutionarily. Ancient, I mean, our reptilian culture, brains. Every ancient culture has a flood story, right? 
Right. And then you've yeah. heard the theory that we used to have like webbed fingers and toes. Like maybe we aquatic were, ape, yeah. you know, maybe <laughs> like most ape. of the earth <laughs> there's, was, there's an aquatic ape theory. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and that's how we got like hairless and st- stood up straight. And that's why our fingers actually, uh, you the know, wrinkling. that's why they get wrinkled is for like traction, like a tire. So you can pick things up underwater. Yeah. Did you know that? No. Yeah. There's like all these cool things like, oh, and then so, cause that's kind of like loosely what that book is based about the, what? the free diving one. And, uh, it also talked about. Uh, what was that guy's name that was taking the ketamine and he invented the, uh, John C. Lilly. So it had a whole chapter on that fucking guy. And so did you know he, he invented the, the sensory deprivation tanks oh, Okay, and then partied with LSD and dolphins. No, <laughs> he literally tried that to communicate. Amazing. He thought that dolphins are going to be like on the news and shit in like no time. He was like giving dolphins LSD and under- going into these like. Ketamine, uh, flotation, flotation tanks, tanks and K-O. and trying to like well he was also taking LSD with them too he's like all kinds of shit but they actually actually created they call it the order of the dolphin and it was with uh what was that occultist guy too it was a uh, what was his name he was like Alex a scientist was, well he was kind of like oh, uh, close he was to the him. guy who blew himself up in the rock he was a yeah, rocket scientist what was his name yeah I wish yeah but anyways um, they made Parsons no no par- yeah Parsons Persons or whatever, yeah. They made the order yeah. of the dol- dolphin, and it was like the secret society where they thought that they were gonna like learn the dolphin language, and then they were gonna be like have reality shows and be on TV and all this shit. Do you want to hear something that I'll take well, makes it a little I'll weirder? Talk to you this. <laughs> but the thing about that though, in the the book, it's all about um, you know people being able to do things that they thought was impossible, and so there's f- through sonar, which is what dolphins and bats use. There's literally blind people yeah. that can go mountain bike riding. They can see through making clicks. Yeah. And they can see as well as we can. Well, they know where things are, but and they can pick out things that once they're told, but they can't tell colors. They can't. You're be, that's being. <laughs> yeah, I've seen the. There's a, a black kid that was navigating through a, a course, riding a bike, all the above, and they throw that's something. Pretty impressive. Yeah. The level of detail is quite precise. Um, but where does that come from? Well, it's echolocation. Be, Bats use it. I know, but that's got to be somewhere down in our like ancestors were able to do like clicking or like some kind of sonar shit. Well, it goes back to our brains. Some people have synesthesia. When they hear something, they visually see something like color. So we're all we all kind of agree that we all have the same senses. That's how we're talking to each other right now. And why our clothes match? Like we all see the blue. We we agree that we see blue, black. But what we're talking about is the true reality. We don't know. Do you think there's colors that exist in other planets that we've never seen before? And would we be able to perceive them? You do know about the. Oh, to answer that question specifically, I hope so. I don't. I. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they discovered a new color. That that's in art and stuff. They've always and in meditation. What they, if our they, brain is limited to only seeing the colors that we're allowed to see? That's well, what I'm wondering. The cones like, in our eyes. Any other color would just be like black yeah. right. or brown or something. Yeah. You know, like yeah. we wouldn't recognize. What if we're limited to that to I, that palette? I've always wondered how they said dogs see in black and white. Have you heard that? Yeah. yeah. And I always wondered, like, how the hell did they test that? How do they know? They yeah, can't unless talk. you see through them. Right. So it's actually a quite well, maybe simple, they held up like color stuff. It's or... a mechanical pro. There's rods and cones in your eyes. Okay. And they apply across biology. Well, maybe they just smell in color. Well, they're showing that dogs now can actually sense magnetic fields like birds. So how does that? And some people claim that they can sense magnetic fields. How is that? Science. Aliens. Aliens. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of aliens did you see that it was like new york times or something where what was he like a i don't know you're talking it was some kind of pentagon official or something like that is it tic tac well there was that but then he said that we have received oh that's a bullshit article aircrafts that yeah. well how no why, how could you miscon it was we have received quote you can actually follow up on this right now he, i thought that was an exact quote we received we'll say it just so people because I don't remember exactly what he said. He said like, something. We've received along, crack from not no, this world. He said something along the lines like he was just being like, "That's like that's not human technology. That's out of this world technology." That 
it's, was it's he actually though? been disbunked since you've read that article. By who? Snopes? That guy's... <laughs> Don't do this. <laughs> Don't oh, do this. Who was that guy that came on um, on Joe Rogan? The guy that, Alex the, Jones. No. <laughs> the, no. No, the, uh, the skeptic guy. The Proctor. Uh, oh, Bob, Pro- Bob Proctor, right? No, um, Bob. He's the guy that had the... Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar. Lazar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what do you have to say about that? Like, what well, do you what do you think about? He all was that? well. I I mean, the way he's he 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 talked about the element two fifteen or one fifteen yes. or whatever yeah, yeah, before yeah. anyone knew about it. Before yeah. anybody knew it, just and recently then, discovered. And then he said basically he was brought <laughs> in and and was like, okay, we got this aircraft. Now you have to reverse engineer it. And the reason he got brought in is because the engineer before him tried to cut into it. And blew himself it a, up. It was it. apparently like a nuclear reactor, and he blew himself. We have up. this chemical now. We we have it. And what's funnier is the Blink One Eight Two guy thinks he has an even a better one. A piece. <laughs> like, you've heard about that part, right? Well, I heard that he's like super he has a into stabilized it. version of it. And he claims he's like working with the CIA. They even They're have like a foundation, something. actually. Yeah. Like, to the Skies Academy. Um, we do. We've done some signs for his his print company. Oh, I had a friend that I mean, he they recorded their whatever the original album right here in Escondido or something. Yeah, well, they recorded it in Escondido, right in Grand. I had a friend that actually helped with the engineering. Bob Lazar, though, is fascinating. It's he's and you know what? He has a lot to lose and nothing to gain from telling all yeah. this stuff. That's the, that's the way. That's why I mean, a lot of people try to like like discredit him, but he was like saying that that he saw at least hangers with at least nine or ten ten uh uh. Alien craft, different alien. Craft. And you know what he said too, which is trippy, that some of them were received from an archae- archaeological dig. Wow! Like it's something old that they found. Yeah. Archaeology does not mean it's ancient. They could have been the Nazis buried it too. Like the Nazis were making lots of weird aircraft. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but where did they, the fact they that get that technology? You think like where if say there was Roswell was a real uh, thing that weather, happened weather balloon. Do you think that we're the only country that like something like that happened? Absolutely not. But no. that, why do you think we stole all the the Nazis over here? Like best sign you know, operation you know who, pa- paperclip. I mean, who has really been like who I was surprised has has a lot of uh, extraterrestrial like history. Japan, dude. Japan has 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 these like crazy. I mean, I've you know everybody's seen the ancient aliens uh, on Japan, but they have these crazy rocks. That are Carved just it? that are carved or whatever. Or they're like in the middle of nowhere, and um, they talk. They talk about him, and you know, like I think even the even the the emperor of Japan, um, the current emperor, the current emperor. Okay, so somebody high up. I don't know if it's the the current emperor or somebody in has been abducted. What? Yeah, like they, he's they openly and he has openly talked about being abducted like his wife or something like like it, it, if you google, if up. you google it or something i i saw it on a on a in, a, in an interview or something so you do know. you recall if it's the tip it's the like the archetypical thing like where they did tests on him or i, was I it didn't really peaceful? get the, the details of what happened to him but he yeah. it's just it's crazy that somebody would admit that yeah, was high up high up you know that but that's they, why i wondered about bob lazar because I also believe in like psyops, like mm. where they'll just they tell you all kinds of truth or fake. Like they just load you up with so much disinformation that you can't tell what's true. What's true, right, right, right. No. And why is he still alive? You know, like usually anyone would just disappear. A lot of people just vanish and die. Like if these were really like uber top secret, like they're letting them talk for thirty years about it. Like, yeah, that's just curious to me. Like, where's but I love hearing them. Like yeah, I, I no, love that stuff. And you know, that's that's interesting that you bring that up. Like, why would they? But I mean, may, maybe they're trying to introduce it to us slowly, feed it slowly to us, allow it. Because I'm not as I'm not in shock about stuff now. I mean, I would love to see more more during COVID. More, would be the perfect time, right? Be just, like, okay, like, just, <laughs> are they? Is it contagious to them? <laughs> COVID is alien made. And it was to, to, to create havoc on Earth and show us that we're nothing. You know, like, bring us all down to our knees. Which it did. Yeah. And uh, 
yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm hoping that maybe in my lifetime I I get to see um, some space travel or or something something cool. You know, they they talk to a lot of these astronauts um, that have gone up to the space station and and even even the moon landings and stuff like and and dude, aliens have been watching us for years, dude. Like even even the the guys that were talking that the, like Neil Armstrong and all those guys that went up to the moon, if you believe in it, I <laughs> um, do. I firmly believe um, that, that. He said that they they saw they saw they saw spaceships like on the ridges, like watching them, like they were being fucking monitored. They saw lights. Yeah, I mean that they saw things which could have been weird satellites, the Soviets. Like to say it's like a, a ship, like is it Star Wars, Star Trek? No, like it's there's not no a, more detail beyond Enterprise. Life. Huh? It was the Star Enterprise uh Stardate. Oh uh, whatever. But is that documented that they saw that? Captain's log. Captain's <laughs> log. <laughs> <laughs> there there are some, there are like Well remember he said that real, really cryptic like speech. Exactly. I wish I could look Recently. it up. Like, yeah, what the, the hell did he say? It was like not that long ago. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? That was but there's Buzz Aldrin. Oh yeah, it was one of them. Crazy, one yeah. of those original dudes. And then Buzz Aldrin punched that guy at one time for telling him it was fake. He's like, boom, and just punched the guy. It was fake. They gave him some uh, ambassador or something. Wait a minute, fake moon rock. I don't know if it was the same story, but remember that it was like there was- are contingency. They had contingency plans in case they failed, and they did give fake rocks. Yeah, yeah. But no one knew the difference. It was like they fossilized just mixed, wood. They just mixed them up. <laughs> <laughs> they tested it. They're like, wait a minute. <laughs> some believe the moon came from Earth too, though. Like it, something smashed into I think Earth. That, no, I, I don't think that's a theory. I think that's real. Abs- because they call it. There's Earth one and Earth yeah. two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like a planet. Do you know about that? Like a long time ago, a pl- another planet like hit Earth, and that's the moon is actually a chunk from Earth. I think that's and it possibly even. Gave us a lot of our water that we have. Like it wasn't always water wasn't even on the planet yet. It's it's pretty much held up there. I think we'll never know. Yeah, we'll never know. But I just hope some of these theories are real. I don't know. I'm. I'm what would I'm they always, do for our day to day though? You know, I don't know. How it would change me. I think what that if government. I think if we if we if we found out that we came really came from aliens and we and we figured it out that they were among us. I think it would destroy destroy religion. Okay. First of all, what if it's all a big hoax and it's not even real? Which part of it? The whole thing. Well, I mean, all, what whole thing? The aliens? the aliens are coming down. Like they they're, they're going to use it to like unite everybody, and they're going to be like, we're going to be a intergalactic one world government. And here's your microchip. Well, going back to the psychedelic thing, I believe we're seeded from something else. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, how do you even know up? it's from this dimension? Right. That's how far I'm out there. Like. I, I actually started, agree with yeah. you. Like, I think that this is just like a, a, a dimension that we're all in and we're able to like dwell in. Yeah, yeah but that, it's I the mean, frequency. That's, we're we're nine hundred or what is it? The frequency of Earth four hundred twenty eight. That's a frequency that Earth hums at. What's that? That's where we're at. It's right? funny because sometimes uh, I do meditations on YouTube. You, you and see they, those, right? And they, I see the 432 hertz. <laughs> yeah. And I, I hear, like, there's this girl I like to hear. And she puts, like, it's know. progressive. It's progressive, right? So she talks. And she talks about, like, you know, things. And I think of just just beautiful things, right? Is she channeling? And she, no, she's not channeling. But uh, eventually it's you start hearing, like, a beat. And it's like eleven minutes. It's a. It's. A, I don't do anything more than fifteen minutes because I can't. I can't stay focused. So I do little little chunks of meditations, right? And so she she just it starts with just her voice, and then it starts getting synthesized, like somebody synthesizes it, and then you can hear like a beat start start, but she's still talking. All it is is synthesized voice. And talking, and by the end of the the meditations, it's a full on song, dude. Like, that sounds cool. You have to yeah, tell me that. And it's and it's um, it actually like what she says is going with the music, like like it's real positive, like affirmations. Wow! Um, I'll send it to you guys. I'll do a and it's at chat. like a frequency. And it's too. at a, it's yeah. at a, she does it at a free. It, it, it's like a self help person okay. on YouTube that has a lot of, that probably like does her living off of it. Um. I like that. But yeah, I just was like, 
whoa, like, like I did it once. And then I was like, oh man, dude, like that really like affected me. Like I had this, like, you know, not only what she was saying, but the, the frequency and in the beat, like the whole thing had me like, I don't know if maybe, you know, it had me going. Yeah. How's it? The bottom line is I think humans are like very hackable <laughs> more than we want right. to believe. Oh, we can prove that. I was just going to ask. Like, TV. Yeah. Oh, so many Tom things. Yeah. <laughs> it, just, it taps into this like ancient, like, you know, part of our brain or something. There's nothing we can do about it. The right. mirror, mirror neurons. We're just, we're just like part of a tribe. We're yeah. just big old open, like sensory organs. Yeah. yeah. We want to think we're like so far above that or, you know, like, yeah, Oh, yeah. you can't, you can't hack me. And then we're like staring at Instagram all day. <laughs> we're like scroll. Yeah. <laughs> Doom scroll in the yeah. black mirror. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Back to the frequency thing. I was going to bring up, like you spend your, your time as like in headphones as a DJ a lot. Right. Have you ever ran across what they call binaural beats? Um, Cause that's on YouTube as well. Like it's, if you've seen the frequencies, you'll probably look for the word binaural in some of those. And what they're doing is they're giving you a, a stereo signal, one frequency in one ear, one frequency in another. And then in, inside your head, you hear a third tone. What? It's quite, it's, they're called binaural. And yeah. I've done some that actually can create like, like a swirling, a swirling sound. I'm sure that's what that's. Yeah. Um, but then you get the people that craft these tones, like, for anxiety, for sleeping, for depression. Yeah. So it's pretty you, woo, but you, you know what I like I've, it. You know what I've always wondered? I've always wondered how um, music affects us, well, like spiritually, does. or how how it it um, it like I I want to know like because it's such a big part of who I am. Like as far as like I need I need I need beats. Yeah, but I mean, if even just I think about this all the time too. Like, I mean, and it's not like I'm a straight up musician like you guys. Like that, like I don't play an instrument. I I just play other people's music, and I do. I I you're mix a musician. It. You're a drummer. You're, you're a mix. musician, man. You're you're tapped in. You, you know. Then you start playing drums. Though? Yeah, I started. I mean, but I'm not a drummer. Like I don't like no rules. Well, when was the last time you had a drum set? Five years old. No, ten years old or something. But you started drumming at how old? Like five. I mean, like that's when, pretty young, when, man. Yeah, I mean, that's not. I was, I was. My mom says that I was, I was putting trash cans together mm -hmm. and taking the lids off and using those as hi hats already without anybody telling me anything. Did, did you ask her if you were doing like an eight oh eight or like? <laughs> no, I, I asked her. I, it, she, my grandparents were like, "We need to get this kid some drums," and then they got me drums, and they're like, "Oh man, we regret that." <laughs> uh, <laughs> what did we do? <laughs> what hey, you guys I, remember? Bobby McFerrin, that yeah. musician. Don't worry. Be happy. Be happy. He has a legendary TED Talk. I've seen it, yeah. He thinks our heart, we are all have an internal drum machine. Right. That actually we're and what physics is proving is that we're waves and particles. Music is just waves. So mu I think music and frequencies are actually they're part of our electrical bond. But unpack that TED Talk a little bit because there's so he, a whole theory behind yeah. that song. It was really interesting. Go ahead. Well, I he don't got know the about whole the don't without worry. even singing it. He yeah. got the whole audience to do it. So the TED Talk that I was talking about, he just comes out on stage and stands there and like waves, no, totally silent, and then he goes. Bah. But he doesn't even make it. it doesn't even audience. make a noise. Bah. I, don't I thought even he hummed or something. Maybe. I don't and know. then he goes this way and goes gets lower. Bump. And instantly, he makes the crowd do the pentatonic scale. Scale goes A B C D E F G. Da, 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 da. And he made the point that wherever he goes in the world, no matter what the language, age, every culture will pick up on the pentatonic scale. Do do re mi fa so la di do. Mm -hmm. Um, and he ties that back to the heartbeat too. So right. I think music is think major skill actually, but. What is it? I said pentatonic, though. Well, that's a mode of the major scale. But anyways, pentatonic <laughs> is usually minor. I don't know what I'm talking I, I about. No, I'm not. I don't know what I'm talking <laughs> about either. But no, I saw that TED Talk, and it's really interesting because, I mean, they must have known, obviously, that that was the guy with that song. But he basically, without really making that 
I mean, yeah, he probably did at first made those the noises of the scale, but I think he just started pointing after that, right? And then he did the beat, and then he got the audience to basically do that whole entire song. Yeah. It was pretty interesting. I love stuff like that. And, was, you know, fast forward to modern pop music, they're all kind of working from the same toolbox. Mm-hmm. So, but, and then, you know, as being a DJ, genres can almost break down to BPM, instrument, so it's a science. Yeah, it is. It is a science. I didn't know that before. You said that that different kinds of like electronic music well, is what's, based what's on crazy the is like I when it, when I play music, I run my tunes through mix uh, this program called Mixed in Key, and what it does is it puts all my tunes in key, and so when I play when I DJ, I mix in key, so. Uh, it basically like there's a whole scale. What's your DJ name? Switch. Um, there's a whole scale, and it just kind of labels a tune what the what the what the the key is in, what key it is, and what I do is I just keep it, and it's a num- numbering system. So I may not know exactly what key it is, but I know I can if I stay within two numbers of the tune that I'm playing, I'll Always be in good. key. Yeah. And I'll and I'll come in and I won't it won't my transitions will be a lot smoother. My the the beat and the it, it'll flow a lot better. I feel like it has made me a better a better better DJ. Josiah, that's like how my omnicord works. It's all like you're keyed in, so that's why you can play any note and there, it always sounds good. Yeah. Um that's cool. And you can you can tell like what's crazy is like some of us like when I played when I played vinyl, I didn't have a mixed in key program, but I naturally gravitated to tunes that went well together. So I was, I had an internal, like, I w- was finding my own keys without even, without even having a program yeah. to do it. And a lot of people, that's where, that's where you, I feel like the, some of the artistic part of being a DJ, like, if you can, if you can, do vinyl and do it well. I think you have a special ear. Well, that's what like perfect pitch is, right? Yeah, Where you can like tell a key pitch. just by listening to yeah. it. And so, um, I mean, some of my mixes, I didn't know what, what freaking key I was in. And are you automatically beat matching too? Yeah, I'm automatically yeah, so beat that, matching. That's a skill as well. Like you, you can chop. But that, like, I mean, a monkey can do that. You learned it. Yeah. Right, but yeah. that goes back to your heart, I think. Like, yeah, well, it's like beat. counting. You can like, know when you're I'm, off. I'm, I'm, I'm all, and it's at first I would always be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, one, two, you know, count count my eights and my sixteens, and and when when I could go into a tune because there's there's special places. I guess I do it naturally now because I'm kind of clueless about it. Now I I just it's your a style song now. a song. I'll play and I'll know where it is just by listening to it. I'll be like, oh, okay, so I got, I got like eight bars to mix in, mm-hmm. and then and then I'll I'll bring in bring it in and it'll it'll come in good. You so know, it's just it'll, second nature now. It's like yeah. it's almost like second nature. Beautiful. Um, which I'm thankful. For. How long have you been DJing? Um, if you had to think back, since I was like maybe late teens, um, messing around. You know, um, I started buying like because turntables were expensive, man. They were like seven, eight hundred bucks for some techniques, and so me and my brother we kind of chipped in for one. Started buying vinyl. That's expensive too. Where'd like, you buy your vinyl at back then? Um, there was like stores that we go like Amoeba. We we go to Amoeba, or we'd go to like there was like little stores all over the place. CSL here, and there was there was a couple of like down in PB. There. Right, there was one like in Old Blues Town, and Gary's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in Old Town, there was one. Yeah, I went there a um, few times. Um, go to LA a lot. I actually, still have some vinyl from there. Um, I mean, I, I'd I'd go to LA and come back with like you know bins of it because I mean you, I'd shop for used. I don't. I didn't get all, always like new when I was when I was new to it. I'd get used vinyl to practice on because a vinyl only a vinyl will sound its best the first couple of place right yeah it degrades and then after that your sound quality starts to degrade so 
that made me buy like doubles of stuff because I would have one to play and one that I was just obsessive about and was like, one day I'm going to be like, I'm going to play this brand new, you know, like. I get it. It doesn't work that way. (laughs) That's like Henry (laughs) Rollins will will collect like the pressings Mm because he thinks like, it does have it makes sense he's just like, a collector though yeah but he thinks like the first pressing of a punk album will sound better than the seventh pressing and he can hear it yeah on his hundred thousand dollar speaker system so good for him yeah but are you about what do they call it digging is that yeah I, I mean like, like, that, like digging crates yeah i mean you know you just um so i go to like a thrift store and see if you find something cool yeah or, like, yeah, I'll, I'll dig, yeah. I'll dig. Shit. like if it's jungle or drum and bass i'll dig for sure, and I'll I'll pull out some some I've 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 actually found some real gems, and gotten them, and then came home and and some of my friends came over or whatever, and they were like, oh my god, you found that album! Like I've been looking for that for like ten years or whatever, and he's all they're like, I'll give you twenty bucks for it, you know, not pay two bucks for it or something, and I'm like, take it, you know, like I just was digging, I saw that, I I like, you know, like I'll give you five dollars. Yeah, I'm I was just like, but. You know, I just, I have kind of made it my, my thing where I just listen to a lot of music. Like my, my off time, I'm like Mr. Multitasker, man. Always, always looking for that new stuff and then kind of like arranging what I have um, and getting rid of it. Like nowadays I've been in on this binge. I have on my Serato, I have 23,000 tunes loaded and wow. Um, so I've been on this kick where I've been going through and getting rid of stuff. I don't, I won't, I won't play anymore. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I, 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 the other day I did, I got rid of 2000 tunes and I was like, man, I, I must have so much in here. Cause before my thing was like, collect, 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 collect. It doesn't matter if I like it or not. Now I'm more like quality. Not quantity, quality, quality, and so I feel like I, every musician kind of gets there eventually. Mm-hmm. It's like not a, really about like your big bag of tricks. It's just about like I've heard it explained like play the hooks that you could hang your hat on. Right. That's that's how you know. Like I ask myself when I when I get an album like a drum and bass album, I usually won't. I will play maybe like two or three tracks off of it because they're either my style or the other stuff I like. But they're just not something I would play. But but sometimes I, I have this emotional attachment to it because it's like a certain artist, a certain label. Um, it'll be like super badass artwork, artwork, you know, some attachment to it where I'm like, oh, no, I have to keep the whole thing, you know, intact. <laughs> or I'll put it on CD one day. Or, you know, like just these crazy thoughts that go through my mind of the collector's thoughts, mm-hmm. you know, like where you're like, oh, no, no, I have it now. You know, so are they I, doing any shows right now at all? Or is there anything oh, opening no, back up? I don't like because you were actually DJing. Like, oh doing yeah, live I started. Before. I started playing at organized crime. Um, this whole dojo thing is is uh, that's cool that t- you guys it's have. Yeah. Explain on. explain it's, that uh, dojo. Dojo is just a collective of DJs. It's me, uh, Anthony, who's DJ unknown. Um, it's my boy Randy, who is uh dj savage and then it's my boy casey who's dj casino um and it's my boy guillermo who's dj slider uh it's my other boy seth seth b and we're just all like good friends that kind of like uh share the love of drum and bass and we all kind of got together and we i mean we're all friends from like the past just going to parties going to raves um, drugs, you know, like just, just like us, you know, where it's just a little click that I, I kind of want it. Like for me, I didn't know these guys before I got to Escondido and I got to Escondido like maybe 10, 12 years ago where, and where I started being like a living here or whatever. So I met them and, and, uh, um, I found, I, I, I found that the, the, I found that we had like a lot in common with the whole DJing thing and we they formed they formed the collective before me and um they were having me open up a lot they were having me hey you know we're having a radio show do you want to come over oh yeah and you know i just 
I became it became like, hey, come over, have some beers, uh, play some tunes, um, go to a show. We'd go to shows together. You know, we 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 went to that spy show. That was DJ SPY. SPY. That shit was so cool. Yeah, because there was even I think I told you about this, right? First of all, Remind that guy was all vinyl, right? Yeah. He had like three turntables going at the same time. Yeah, he was three and, decking. And, and like, there was dudes that came out and rap over it. Yeah. And I mean, it's fast pace. It's drum and bass. Dude. They were rapping They're so MCs, fast. Yeah. yeah. That was really cool. And But even before that, at uh, Randy's, we at Randy's Savage's, yeah. Savage's house, like just that, like I never seen you guys, I've yeah, never yeah. seen you DJ Get before that. And, stuff, yeah. and the way you guys were like switching off and stuff, and I was just sitting there. You know, took some MDMA. I was just like <laughs> watching that, like, dude, that was different world. Yeah, it was just me. They were like doing a whole show, and I'm just chilling in the living room. It was just they're sw- switching off and doing the whole thing, and I'm just sitting there like, this is awesome. I gotta say, I mean, I'm not really super it's, into yeah, that stuff, but, but I think drum and bass, I think, is I, my favorite. No. You know, I used to like and jungle. I, I, do you? But that's what I was gonna ask. Like, do you know any jungle or any like DJs? Or are you like strictly yeah, like I, curious? I mean, like I play a lot of jungle. Jungle. So you is do just play jungle a, sometimes. Jungle, too? It's like, like similar, German right? Bass, German yeah. bass is like a little s- subgenre. Because you said it, grime, like grime's a whole thing too. Grime, grime is a whole the dubstep. It, it, yeah. Grime is more like a dance hall, and there's so many like um, genres. genres. Yeah. But um, jungle. Liquid funk, drum and bass, um, acid, acid. That's acid more like house. acid house. Okay, that's more house. It's more f- four on the floor. It, it, drum and bass is a little harder. Okay, um, but uh, yeah, it derived from acid house. It derived from breakbeat. It derived from um, techno. A lot of techno influences. There's a lot of dark. There's trance fall in there. There's, there's, I, there's I feel trance like trance is very dark, and it always gives me a bad trip if I'm tripping around. Really? I See, I, I got into Psytrance like when oh. I was in Colorado with the burner scene. Oh, dude. And then Psytrance and dubstep. That's that's my new like that's, I just, that's like, my new thing, oh. Psytrance. Yeah. I just, I, but I've it's, been buying the, a lot the of hardcore it. people, though, or I don't know what hardcore is. To, to me, I'm calling them hardcore. Like, OG people like they hate like they're not liking it like the festivals like there seems to be a clear divide in the burner community that I've seen that like Psytrance and don't mm-hmm. but I think it's beautiful like, I, I think it's all great what was the first one the first back one. in the day like the first Techno. what do you call it like the first style was it Acid House well, well, where okay, do you start because so, it, so, it kind of started in like the Midwest too there's like an interesting story well the thing it, right? is is that um, and it went to Europe it started it with back. like disco Disco yeah. was like the original, uh, kind of like electronic music yeah. that happened, and then a lot of people started hating on it. And then there was the Stark Club. You've heard about that in t- yeah. in Dallas. That's yeah, actually where MDMA that's where like a lot of stuff, a lot of a house started, or a yeah. lot of of of, of breakbeat. Well, that's where ecstasy got popular. Oh, that's that's right. where they named I, it ecstasy. It got I, I, big. I do remember that. But and a lot like of pop the pop stars, B, dude, Madonna, Madonna, the B52s. It was like yeah. the Studio 54 after like all that. David so Bowie all and stuff. There, yeah. yeah, and they all just started like apparently they're just walking around with pillow cases full of <laughs> ecstasy pills, and it was legal back then too. So yeah. They were handing it out like like, like nothing. it's nothing. So I always think of like that's the birthplace. Yeah, I mean, but Europe had a huge scene. I mean, like you know, you can talk about Chicago being the birth of house. You can talk about Detroit being the, the birth of techno. I've been to I've been to both Chicago. I love Chicago house, um, but I also love techno. And I I went to um, uh, the Detroit Music Festival, the DMF, and it was one of the best experiences. Like I I just love love. I, I I love drum and bass, but I also love other music as well. Cool. I think it's made me a a, a, a better connoisseur mm-hmm. of drum and bass to acquaint myself with other genres. Um, just just so that it's so, so that my my I guess my palate. But was it Chicago? Because what I, from what I've heard, and I don't really know that much about it, but it wasn't necessarily like Chicago proper, like where it got big. It was like way like like. You know, on the outskirts, almost like farmhouses and stuff. Like I'm sure you know, that's like, almost I'm, like I'm sure it was like not super what you underground. Would think. And you yeah. know, somebody went, somebody took it over to to Europe, mm-hmm. and they started making acid house. That's what I was gonna there. say. Yeah, that's right. where that's where acid house um, got started in Europe, um, and then that's that's when just electronica blew up. 
I had some some buddies in Colorado that were re- they were from Florida and they were really into Rabbit in the Moon. Oh, I love Rabbit. All the Florida stuff. What is like what genre Rabbit, is that? Rabbit in the, Rabbit in the Moon was um like it was it was a I call it funky techno. Okay. I, I, I it's it's breakbeats. I, I like to call it breakbeats. And they uh, um it was this guy named Bunny, and he put on a whole like show he was it was one guy he was like weird like Aphex twin kind of he he had his like you know dramatic he had they had like big stage and he put on a big like a big trippy show but his music was dope you know really good breakbeat music and it was a i think it was a florida thing that's what i heard too um, and also like the the florida thing like with dj like back in the day they had the best breakbeats like that's what i was gonna say florida has the best breakbeats um, and I love break beats. Um, that's mean. I have that one vinyl I showed you. That's yeah. actually where I got it down in Old Town. It's, it's like the samples. Super Duck. Yeah. Well, no, that I have that, and then it's like Super Duck break beats. It's all like yeah, yeah like different break. And I mean, like you, you, you can see break beats and everything. Yeah. Um, especially like dubstep and and like all the grime. I love grime. I love like dance hall. But were um, you always into that, or because? We talked about this before, like you were in like kind of growing up more like kind of rock and roll and yeah. stuff, right? Like I mean, we like I, about- I grew up, I grew up on like classic rock. Um, I grew up, um, listen, I was actually like a metalhead, man. I, I went to see like Queensryche. I went to see Iron Maiden. I went to see Metallica a bunch of times. Did you um, see Metallica like when they were good? Wh- I yeah. saw them when they were like- Master of Puppets. That's Damn. it. Yeah. I saw a master. I have a. I used to have a master of puppets shirt from their concert. I paid wow. thirty bucks or something, which is was outrageous back in the day. Like, yeah. I, I saw Metallica at the end. The black. When, um, no, when they when they cut their hair off in '96 like and they did Lode. Lollapalooza. Oh, yeah. when Load came out, I yeah. think. Oh, okay. And so was damn. it Load? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed it. Sitting at the black album. Is I wonder that- <laughs> was that with Dave Mustaine though? Wasn't he on? He uh, was in Metallica. He was the was, original. Yeah, oh, was he Metallica. on? Master of Puppets, or was it Kill Em All? I don't all, think I so. Think it was before that, I think he was yeah, in he was Kill, only Kill Em All. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we were. Oh, talking the Anthrax about. guy, Dave Mustaine. Or no, no, that's uh, that's Dave Mustaine's no, guy. From, Mustaine is uh, in, Mustaine is um, not Megadeth. 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 Yeah. Megadeth. yeah, that's Dave. Mustaine. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I didn't know he, he was even in Metallica. Yeah, he was the original. Yeah, oh, was Metallica. there's yeah. a producer, had, there's like, a producer like, named Anthrax, and um, that does Jungle. <laughs> and drum and bass and i want I, part of me wants to like i always think oh i need to check up because i used to love anthrax the 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 the, the band, metal band the hardcore mm-hmm. band or whatever and uh i always want to check and see if it's one of those guys because i'm always like you know it sounds about right drum and bass and that hard stuff they used to play like there's some hardcore drumming in in that just, just but, you know uh, random bit <laughs> We were just talking about a potential guest, actually a guy, this guy, Zach, I went to high school with, because Dave Mustaine actually, it's probably one of his houses, but he lives right here uh, by like Del Dios, mm. and he has his own uh, personal like home studio, and I guess my, um, I wasn't really super close with him in high school, but I know him, and he's, I guess he was like his own personal like sound engineer wow. for his home studio, like right here and uh, kind of by Lake Hodges, so. Yeah. Um, I have world. to admit I wasn't a big Megadeth fan. I think he's a great guitarist, um, and I think Kill 'Em All is a is a is a good is a good oh for sure freaking album. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a few songs I like from Dave Mustaine. I think we all three of us have this in common though. We were really into Smashing Pumpkins, right? We've talked. Oh about my this. gosh, I got to see their last show. At oh the my band gosh, with Darcy. James Eha was in San Diego. Yeah, and I have a bootleg recording of it. And uh, yeah, they have, they have a new album out. Actually, it's a double album. I've listened to a few singles. It's called Is like it good? Zyra or something. Or I it's mean, poppy. It's weird. Poppy. Well, they, they did another one with all the original <laughs> he, ones too, like a couple of years he ago. He grew up, got sober, and they... he's into WWF wrestling. Oh, yeah. Is he? He is. I mean, Billy Corgan. Billy Corgan loves WWF. You'd, you'd actually be surprised who's into that stuff. Ronda Rousey. <laughs> Are you serious? David. Yeah, David, you didn't know David. that? She's, well, she's, she's in it now. She's, she's in, in it now. Man. She's got Rowdy what? Ronda Rousey. That's oh, she's part of the, ro- the ro- like Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Is that a crew Piper's, or something? Rowdy Rowdy Piper's daughter. 
and Ronda Rousey are like teaming up. Yeah, so it's like connected. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember. And, Ronda I mean, apparently, I mean, I mean, more power it, to her. Bad? I was into like the old school wrestling, like with Hulk Hogan. Yeah, but why is that okay in this new stuff? Not well, okay? my my. My era UFC. was more like Undertaker <laughs> and like I was super yeah. into Yeah, my brother was yeah. into that era. Yeah. The Rock. The Rock, yeah. The guy there was a big San Diego guy too. That my brother my brother was really into it. David's really into it. He likes the Lucha Libre, the Mexican wrestling. Yeah. Um I know a lot of people that still love it. And I I don't get it. I don't get it. But I like UFC now. So what am, what does that mean? I mean, that's real. But though. UFC is real, man. It's well, like, but the thing is, the show they do all the wrestling bullshit. I like wrestling more now that it's like known because I remember the day when I found out it was fake. <laughs> <laughs> what, when wrestling? I used to, yeah. But oh. now it's like everybody knows it's fake, obviously. But we have the internet now. But I think it's better now because it's like, yeah, but they're still getting fucked up. Yeah, you know that blood is still real. Like they would cut their eyebrows and deaths, stuff. Yeah. Like, it's, it's real shit. They really messed themselves up, and it's when you see it for what it is. I think it's even cooler. I have respect. I just don't watch it. Yeah, me neither. My brother used to like stay up. It was like Monday Night Raw or something. Oh. Like, like what? Like instead of Monday Night Football, you would watch wrestling or. Have you ever seen the Lucha Libre? I wouldn't yeah. mind seeing that. I mean, I, cool. I, we used to we used, uh, I used to live in San Bernardino. And there used to be a place called the Master Dome, and a lot of a lot of uh, electronic shows happened there. But originally, the Master Dome was a was a lucha libre, uh, uh, like what do you call it, a stadium or something, or little little. Is little, that something in in Hispanic culture or Mexican culture? Oh yeah, it, it goes. Well, I mean, it's, yeah, it's so wondering. embedded mm-hmm. okay. that I mean, they sell the they. I don't I don't get it because I I wasn't raised in the actual. I was raised in America, but you you were born. I was in born Mexico, down there, right? but I I don't feel like I absorbed where in the culture in Mexico City. Mexico City, that's right. But yeah. I don't feel like I absorbed the culture as much as. Didn't you say like you were around like a radio station, and it was like you basically were around like a lot of hippies and stuff. Like, well, my my parents ran a radio station when I was young. Okay, and but you told me so like there was a lot of Beatles being played. My dad was in a band, rock. and he used to be the singer. And he played the flute and harmonica, and so what was the was, name? Um, I don't remember their I don't remember their name, Did but uh, they used to be just like some garage band that okay. would that would, work, that would play like weddings and stuff. Yeah, you well, know? that's funny because I wanted one of the things I wanted to ask you about was how was your dad's. Uh, was he El Pedrino? Oh, dude. <laughs> viral my dad is famous in like Guatemala, that. dude. Okay, I said like, Argentina. Or Argentina. Yeah. Like all those one South of those, America. right? He got yeah, really big. He's, he's got a real Didn't they want him to like tour down there Yeah, they wanted they, he's, he's He's legendary, man. Like and You Dan, showed me. He's like on Spotify or Yeah, he's on too, Spotify. Right? He has like- I have to get a track. He has like 10 albums. Have you sampled him in any way? No. I, I on, to, to, <laughs> to be honest, I mean, like I love the old man. Um I just think I don't. I'm not your style. It's not my style, and I, I think it's great effort, and I think it's great that he plays and he he finds it. But I, I mean, because he does it all himself too. Right? He does it all. That's he cool. did. He mixes it all, and he does all his voices, and he does like a flute track, and then a, a, yeah, a harmonica he, track, and then a, a guitar track. Him? Yeah, he's, he's very ingenious, and I, but I he love. Got big in Guatemala, like how or in that? Guatemala, um, Argentina, Peru. All, he just put because himself he, d- he does ballads. He does. It's like he, on a well, novella or something. He, he's he's on he's on um, iTunes as well. Wow. <laughs> he's on he's uh, he's uh what do you call when you did pay, he, how, pay to he, register all your tunes? He has royalties. He has well, yeah, or, or like copyrighted. He, copyright, yeah. he copyrights all his tunes, and he he's just he's legit in his mind. For Is sure. it what kind of music would you say? It's, it's I think it's like more like uh, Hispanic folklore. Okay. Like folky, he sings a lot about like you know life and and it, it's not like any type of Mexican music. It's more like ballads, you know. He r- writes about love and life and and a special subject, you know, like his son or you know, like he's real macho. He doesn't sing. What's it called when they like sing about the narcos and stuff? And oh they, like, no, 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 no. He's far from that. He's not. He doesn't sing about like you know. Isn't that like a thing? Like the the drug dealer dudes will like yeah. pay them off to like make a song about them. Oh and yeah, stuff. to if make they don't them like infamous? it, they'll kill them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there's. I don't. I don't even. That's you know. 
I ne- I didn't realize how gangster those people are. And they they're look more like cowboys, gang- yeah. They're more gangster than we realize. Yeah. Like cuz if they fuck up a song and people don't like it, <laughs> your life hangs by a thread with those people. And I guess if you make a song, with I'm just, guy, I'm just yeah. like, yeah, you can't like make a song with the wrong dude. Yeah, like if that's a rival of some other guy that yeah. gave you money before. I mean, and, and, and forget that being a journalist down in Mexico is just like one of the most dangerous professions you could ever have. I mean, no, I think it actually is. It is, yeah. I mean, like <laughs> for real, statistically, uh, uh, it is. There's, uh, you know, you think of gangsters as being like either the Italian looking mobsters or like you know. You go to Compton or something. Journalists you know, in Mexico. No, 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 no. They'll be like no shoe wearing, no shirt, and just straight come at you with a machete. Dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, there's that that famous story of like the entire college or high school that hundreds of kids. It was like 40, 40, 40 of them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, gone. The kids. Gone. Yeah. So, from what I understand, is that there's these kids that were on this bus. And they were traveling through an area where they needed to ask permission to be in. And I don't know, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it, they were, it's like the army delivered them. The army or the police delivered the, 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 tr- the, the truckload of, of students to the local narco running the area. And, Instead of like giving them a pass or whatever, or or I don't know if somebody mouthed off or something, but they they basically disappeared, all forty of them. Yeah, they didn't find pieces, and they, <laughs> they gone. I'm, they, and they were saying that they were like melted in acid, and just thrown like whatever was left, like thrown. They're in barrels yeah, somewhere. Yeah, in a barrel somewhere. Well, I told you about my one of my last jobs where they tra- they found that dead body. Down in South in Bay in a barrel. Did you oh, see yeah, that? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And then they, we saw it on the news. My coworker came in and he showed us the barrel. video. He's like, that looked exactly like one of our uh, silicone silicone barrels. It had like the, the same writing number. on the side. And we we're like, wow, that really does. Sure enough, we get a call from the oh, it was, South it was. Bay detectives. And they said that they traced the lot number back to our here. I mean, it's completely opposite side of the, the county. Mm-hmm. And uh, but the thing is, they they traced the lot number, and it must have been like two year two years before, whenever they got it. But uh, even the detective came, and she like she was actually kind of hot too, and uh, she loaded up one of the same barrels to show in the because they caught the guys. They were like mm-hmm. two white guys, and then um, actually the guy that got killed was like a producer too, and one of the guys that I worked with knew him, like from Fallbrook. But uh, yeah, they put him in a barrel, dumped him in South Bay. And, scuba but I guess they right? didn't think to like maybe weigh it down. Oh, it floated up. I thought a scuba diver found it. No, it was low tide, <laughs> and <laughs> then the barrel stuck out of the water. Like fucking, <laughs> not the smartest criminals. Like <laughs> big fail. <laughs> <laughs> but that was always the thing at work. Like if somebody messed up, like get in the barrel. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, this guy I work with was a drummer from Mexico, and he told me a lot of stories, him and his brother, and he, he played. Um, but he told me about a band that I listened to a lot called the Norco Collective. And Nor- or Norco. Is it Norco? Norco or Narco. They're, are they from TJ? Yeah. Okay. I think I used to know one of their DJs. Yeah, they do DJs they and do rock DJ, music yeah. and DJ. And I was yeah. like, this is their videos are- They're pretty cool. They're pretty fun, yeah. yeah. And he, he played, um, ran, there's like a big country music. Like it's, I don't know what it's called. Um, it's not, um, it's not I think that there's a wild right pack of kids or something like the cornhole's over murdering somebody. Just <laughs> somebody didn't pay up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. But, the uh, cumbia music with like the, he plays a lot, a lot of that stuff. A little the, more. Or, the, there's accordion. Cumbia is actually pretty good. What was that yeah. band? Um, uh, terror, terror cactus. Remember? I've heard of that now. Yeah, and they all wear no, it's like cumbia music, but they wear like these I love Spongle. Um Really? They have the D- DMT D- 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 DMT Spongle, the Spongle Tron experience. I got to see in in Colorado and it was him the DJ. No, they did a a small 
They did. I wish I would have seen Red Rock. You don't like Schmongle. Interesting. Not a big fan. Int- we might have tried many times. This, this podcast is being questioned now. No. <laughs> the thing I, the thing I feel with Spongle is like they're trying too hard, but I think I'm kind of purist. Like, yeah, it's made for tripping, but to me, it's like I want to hear like gritty he, rock and roll music with lots of fuzz. I got excited during the pandemic because he, the DJ, released he, he a new a, album. He did an EP, an EP, yeah, but it's very ambient, mm-hmm. atmospheric, and he did more hardware than software. Okay, he did it all on hardware stuff, so analog stuff. Yeah. So you've heard it. Like, I'm, I, I'm, I'm actually a big Spongle fan. What's his name? The um, DJ specifically. I don't, yeah. Fuck. I'm horrible with DJ, with DJ names, but um, I like him and the old man. Yes. He does some really weird stuff. I like Beats Antique as well. Have you heard of them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The Spongle. Spongle experience. You know what I was listening to today? It was, uh, I didn't realize so Dor- heard of Bonobo. and Dorfmeister? I do like them a lot, but Oof. Bonobo. Bonobo is great. But there's this Bonobo. one album that I Bonobo. never, I never Bonobo. heard before. Is that not how you pronounce it? It's I don't know, but know how. Like the chimp, Bonobo like the chimp. chimp. Yeah, it's the the orgy chimps. People, Dude, most people don't know. Everybody says we're chimp. our closest they're, relatives are chimps, but it's do they not. have like crazy orgies or what? They. Well, that's the reason why they can't chimp. have it, have them in the zoo. They right. Everybody they says, off. Yeah. yeah, we're just as related to bonobos as we are to chimps. But are the they reason why the red face? No, they, they look like the, chimps. The they look red, like chimps. The red, they stand up. The red ass. <laughs> but they're literally just fucking all the time. That's they don't they fight do. a lot. They, they yeah, jerk they're like, off. They're all about pleasure. The they're only human. rule that they have is, what is it? A son cannot fuck a mom. There's no but there's incest. like there's like gay sex. They're, yeah. they're, like That's how they say hello. That's why nobody really knows about them is because they don't have them in the zoo because they just fuck all day long. <laughs> but we're ju- PG. We're just as related to them as we are to to chimps. Yeah. So whenever people say, "Oh, well, our ancestors, look at them," you know, we're like warlike and all this shit. Right. You'd be like, well, what about Bonobo? And then you could play him, the artist Bonobo, and then they'll be changed forever. I love tripping to Bonobo. I love it. It's so I feel so like I'm in nature. Like it's it's like organic. And what would you? But, What's but that genre? This one though. Well, that's it's more like, say, an, though. like an ambient dub. Okay. But this one is uh, it's Bonobo. But it, I just found this album. It's called Animal Magic, mm-hmm. and it's trip hop. It's way different like than his that. other shit, dude. Yeah. And it, you could tell there's like a stand up bass in there. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll have to show it to you. It's really good, man. I, I love all that stuff. Yeah, me too. Have you ever heard of Ott? I was just going to, Skylon and all that. Like, I was just going to say, have you heard of Ott? Uh, he has a remix it, album out now. I too. almost went and saw him like last year, I think. Now, what is that name? Is that the psychedelic guy, Jonathan Ott? I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay. We'll go with that. I don't but know. there's a Skylon album from Ott that. Was on my playlist. In oh, I, yeah, I love Ott. Uh, um, he likes song a little bit better more than Schmongle. Yeah, that's okay. So who's the? Because you've said that before. It's like who is that? Jonathan Ott, exactly. What Jonathan Ott, I believe, was uh, a chemist. He was a chemist, I believe, um, ethnobotanist or something like that. But he wasn't as well outspoken. I, he may. I don't even know if he's still alive, but I've seen his name, and I'm not. I've always wondered what OTT was. Like, yes. Yeah. Like, oh, God, like, wow. But what, that. What kind of music would you call that, though? Like, what genre is that? They're uh, ambient. They're he's dubby. Samples. He's kind of dub. Yeah. What would you call Bonobo, though, and like th- that whole so, genre? Trip hop, like dub, bass. I don't know. They, it's hard to pinhole. Yeah, it is, right? Because like, there's I don't that whole group, pin- though. There's like the like, Ninja Tunes, and then there's I love like the Ninja Shlomo. Tunes, and then there's, you know, like, I guess, well, Ninja Tunes is more trip hop. Like, DJ Crush, DJ Shadow. That's, yeah. like, pretty much trip hop. DJ Vadim. But, like, these, like, Bonobo. Like, these are actual bands, though. Once I found that out, like, Shlomo. Jeremiah actually turned me on to these guys. Yeah. Like, Shlomo, uh, Bonobo, Tycho. Tycho. But they have, like, full-on bands. I went to see Tycho last year at San Diego State. It was, uh, my buddy oh, got so really good, really good seats. Yeah. Um. And man, they, they were super good, man. Yeah. That I love coming down to Tycho. That's funny you say that because I've told you this before. He does the burning do, ones, that's the wake up. Yeah, the the rise. They do a sunrise. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you feel like your whole life is just like 
<laughs> Anything is possible when when you hear Tycho in the morning after so, you've been tripping. But I didn't realize it's a band. Yeah, they're like fucking DJ. sick, dude. Yeah. Um, our last podcast with Jeremiah, the outro song is from a DJ like called Botany. It's a guy out of Austin, Texas that I, I've found through Corey Allen, and he has very organic, re- weird ambient stuff. Um. What's like some new music you've gotten into recently, Carlos? Like if you can think of anything. Um maybe we could play it. Some new music. Is there anything that you've been like kind of jamming on that you just you're kind of excited about just like just finding? randomly? Yeah. Um I I mean some I've actually been listening to a lot of Bandcamp and there's this band called Globular and they they do like Dubby, uh, trippy. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. It's 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 kind of it's kind of like trippy music, uh, ambient music, but uh, also like with a lot of rhythm. Like you could you can almost be like, oh man, it could, if you sped that up, it could be like dance music, you know, because it's really like shifty and and or you, I don't know. It's kind of hard to, but globular has been one and. I, I've actually been getting into that psychedelic trance a lot. Um, Have you heard just, the? Um, sorry, I just like I just like the energy. Yeah. Like I would love to go to one of those uh, um, side trance uh, festivals. Um, I see them on TV all the time, or like on YouTube and stuff, and they look just You're looking like an amazing world. Yeah. dude. Like, like I mean, I know that it would probably you'd probably need a break of the. <laughs> The whole the whole time, and especially being on heavy stuff, but uh, it just looks like another world, man. Like, That'd be cool. So the the genre. When I was in Colorado, I also got into a lot of what they call Jamtronica, and there's a band called Ioto. That I can't recommend them enough. It's a a guy behind a bunch of synthesizers and keyboards, and then a drummer, and they do improvised electronica. Like, but he's playing the drums and has they they just they're stacked to the gills with equipment, and they just jam for hours. Ioto. Nice. I keep trying. What's the one that you turned me on to the other night, though? It was like that German. What is it? Kruder and Dorfmeister. Kruder, Kruder I you said earlier. I thought Meister. you were joking. No, oh. it's an actual. It's it like sounds trip-hop. like an audio company. It's really good, though. Is it a duo? What I was a, reading it's about just, and it's, They're actually really, really old, dude. I heard they like get back in the, samples. Back in they the almost like, got- late 90s. Early two thousands, mm-hmm. like they did a sessions, a Kruder and Dorf. Like the one I played you was like, it might be even pre pre two thousands. So they get sampled a lot, right? Oh, dude, they. I think they actually create their music from samples. Um. So they and they're they're like a DJ Crush, DJ like yeah, they're they're like a like a Ninja Tune kind of like deal. Um. I just like the, their their flow. They have an amazing flow about the, you know they bring the funk, they bring the the dub. It's like I always think of you like know like DJ Crush. Yeah, it's like jazz love in that way. You know, yeah, yeah. A lot of times it's, it's really like, jazzy. It's really funky at times. It's really dancey at times. But then it gets serious and it it it, it takes you through like it's it's a it's a story. They tell yeah. a great story. They that's, do. Yeah, that's how I I can tell a good musician. They're able to take me from here to here, and and I I I see where they took me. You know, like I can feel where they took me. You know. Well, it's kind of like what you're talking about earlier. It's like you could play a sad song, and it can make you feel sad. Right. Or you could play a happy song, and it makes you feel happy. Like, what is that? You know. You reacting. To- it's like how different started, frequencies, though, we, right? Like we started talking about how we are frequencies. Everything we hear actually creates a memory and an impulse. So, right. like, I'll hear some songs and I remember old girlfriends. Right. But it, it's the same way with smells. Right. So, I'll smell, I'll smell like certain things and I'll be like, dude, my mom makes a salsa like that or something. You know, like, I'll be like, oh, my grandma used to like fucking make tacos like that or something. Or that meat smells like my dad's, like, something. You know, like, I'll be like, whoa. Like, it's amazing how the brain is just, like, wired. Like It's a pattern recognition engine. So that's why I think you pick up on the beats. And then everything, remo- like, they always, like, when we were making music, I think I would piss you off sometimes. 
when I we'd hear something and then I go, that sounds like X. Yeah, that but it's like, we're trying but, to put words to like yeah. we're trying to use a description so we actually have because you're taking something that's like more ethereal and doesn't really have like a language to it so much and you're trying to like capture that and bring it down to kind of like our human level and try to put words to it but really there's no words to like explain it it's like a dmd trip or something that's why it just kind of like like disappears or like a dream or something like that you know that's why i I kind of that's why i kind of feel like music is like it was like i don't know if it's like a gift to human to the human like I feel like music holds such a special place it, it, to some people, obviously not to everybody, but it, it, there's a certain, like, it, there's a reason why there's, there's, I mean, that, that somebody might be so into it. Um, and it could go beyond just that it sounds good, you know, like the, it's, it's an energy that, that flows through us and it, I feel like it changes us. You know? It's definitely like a real hits a real primal part of your brain. Like I think they said, like um, the Aborigines and stuff. Like even before there was spoken word, like they would use music to like say this is like a like a directional thing. Like this is a map. That's like apparent. I guess like the didgeridoos and stuff, mm-hmm. and they do like these series of clicking and stuff, clicking and stuff, and that's actually like. That's how they would explain like directions and stuff. Like even before they yeah. had spoken word, computers have actually broken out patterns that whales use, and they tell they think they tell stories, and then they'll find them traveling all over the world, resonating, and then different generations of whales will actually pick up on the same thing. To us, they sound like whale songs. Yeah. To them, it could be mumble rap or something. You know, I don't know mumble <laughs> rap. What are well, they doing? What's, <laughs> what's that? What's that one? That 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 that, that hip hop trap that you guys whale trap. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said. I showed him trap one time because I was kind of. I had a little phase, and then what'd you say? A lot of hi hat. <laughs> that was the only thing yet. Well, <laughs> too much hi hat. You no, know, Rich, Rich Beata coined like it's stuck in my head now too. When you get into the trap music with like Rick the Beato. thirty, yeah, Rick Beato, the the thirty second notes. He calls them cicadas. Yeah. So they sound like those fucking, those insects yeah, going. Yeah. Like, yeah. Those things are so annoying, man. If you're in the right place. Oh, well, I visited my sister. I told you in, uh, in Oklahoma East. and those things are so. Oh my God. Loud. I went to Chicago once, dude. And there, those things are like, I was like, you guys have to listen to this. Well, you guys are crazy. You know, when you start getting used to it, it's kind of nice. It just goes, it's, it's just like. It's like a eerie, yeah. You go, you go blank. It was a trip, like, man. They I had, don't even hear them. <laughs> they had fireflies and those things. It's just like totally different. And ticks. That wasn't fun. Oh, I pulled okay. a tick off my balls. That was fun. Shut the front door. Yeah. It's a good time. Second time in my life, actually. On your balls. Yeah. They're attracted. Did it bleed? Yeah. <laughs> Did they latch on, really? Or you found it just down there, or you had to pull it? I had to pull it off with tweezers, yeah. And Damn. they have these little barbs on their head, so it's hard to get off. So you have to, like, but you have you to have be to careful. Burn them. Well, no, I mean, if you have tweezers, you could usually pull them off. But I had a few on my, I was covered in them. My sister did, was did like. Did you, like, dive into a pond or something? No, I just went out into her yard. I know. Cause, well, uh, they don't got yeah. Lyme disease out there, do they? Or it's not the right tick. My brother-in-law, he's like, "Oh, don't worry, the animals here are clean." But I didn't even like put two and two together that like not only are you getting the tick on you, you're getting like every animal that it's ever yeah. been on. So I was like, "Oh, thanks." There's that one that makes you that they're finding in ticks now that makes you allergic to meat, and you Oof. can't ever eat meat again. Become vegan. There you go. <laughs> Become a yoga instructor. The, the animals are striking <laughs> oh, back, and you, and you naturally begin to. Do yoga? Start talking about <laughs> crystals and energy. And We're halfway there. Like healing. <laughs> Breath work. Damn it, Josiah, you're infected. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well. Wow. It's too know. much, man. Have you heard the new uh, Flaming Lips album? No. They it's just came out with the whole thing. Well, like cause, American Head. But it's all like old drug stories. Like Because the singer, he used to be like a weed dealer in Oklahoma. And... Uh, it's like he knew people that like all this stuff, I guess he never talked about or something. And there's like all these stories are like, he knew people that like this guy got murdered and these people like got robbed by drug dealers, but it's actually a really good. Uh, who's the singer that was on that one too? It was like a Cardi it's B a pop, or something. No, or? no, it's a Carly, not Cardi. It's like, 
God, I forgot. Anyways, remember the when we took acid that one time on Bicycle Day and we were watching, it was the David Bowie cover. Oh my God, dude. Space Oddity. You was that space base, oddity, the dude, bass drop the bass drill, drill, right? How many times did we watch <laughs> that? And we were, we were like... We were like pawing at the at the iPad. Yeah, it was like because it was, it was like, like loading. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, but was we must good. have watched that like so many times. It was so good. That was a really good. Uh, yeah. I like that video too. It was yeah. a good cover. I, 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 I have to say, yeah. I'm not. And then he'd like go to the garage and leave me with that tune on, and I'd be like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, to, I've seen the Flaming Lips several, like six times, and I've li- I've listened to every album. You know that bass drop from Space Oddity. Yeah. But the biggest bass drop in any Flaming Lips song is from um, the Soft Bulletin. And it's a spoonful weighs a ton. They and, played that when we saw them. And they actually, time. they mixed that album. I bought it back in the day and it was one of the very first Dolby surround sound. Uh-huh. And my roommate had that. Like I, I listened to that out. The Soft Bulletin is legend. But that bass drop just, like I'm like, it knocks the air out of you. Yeah. Like, Holy fuck. But nice. you probably feel that in drumming. Like people yeah. are going for that all the time. Oh yeah. Bass drops are our thing. I love them. I mean, that's kind of wonder, game, like, right? you know, sometimes I wonder like, why aren't more people like me liking that bass music? You know, like I, I look at people around me. I mean, not you guys, you guys are definitely like oh, in, in, in my eyes, like me. But I look at other people that are not really into music or the kind of music that they're into, and it's not like judging them, but I, they just don't have like a passion for it, you know. Well, do you think it's like Which what we're talking fine. about? I mean, like they might have a passion for other things, but is it like lack of drugs? Do you think, like you were saying? <laughs> oh, really? Though, like you know, is it like a I know where it came from? Like about, you, you know? mine came directly from my parents. Right. Like, I inherited that's, a record that's, collection. That's how. That's how I got yeah. into it too. Like my, I think that has a, yeah, I think somewhere along the line, there's somebody that's like, well, actually, Jeremiah was a big influence. Like, if it wasn't for him, I'd probably still be listening to like Red Hot Chili Peppers or something. Are you serious? Oh, he showed me DJ Crush. Like, he was like, oh, I checked this out. You know, like, he started getting into like different stuff. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it was always like, you know what I call, like, I had a, have still a lot of friends and the only music they listen to, I always make the joke. It's like, Remember we used to buy the music stickers for a quarter out of the little machines? Yeah. It's like, those are all the bands they still listen to. <laughs> you know? It's like the well, corn sticker, Red Hot Chili Slip Peppers. Not. Yeah. It's like the same shit. It's like, come on. You're, it's like it's Lola, the same Lollapalooza. Thing. Yeah. It's like, Pearl Jam. you know, there was but some people, that's all. I like some of that. Old, they're just not into stuff. it, you know? And I don't but, care what genre of music you're into. I feel like if you're super into country and you're like, dude, check out this fucking EP I got. And it's like a really rare vinyl of like so-and-so, you know, whoever, you know, it's like, like, I think that's the same thing. It's like, for example, I've I've never really was into uh, any like old school, like uh, underground hip hop. And I have a friend that's really into it. And he started schooling me about like what real good underground hip hop was. And I mean, my, my hip, my head was blown. Like, I was just like, wow, these guys are really like, you know, hieroglyphics, um, Jurassic five, Jurassic five, two. cut chemist, like all yeah. the cut. Ke- yeah. All, all the, the well, good- even older. Yeah. Like, yeah, can't even go way back, but are we talking like run DMC? The roots. Oh, okay. You know, like, I mean, I mean, some, some real, real Black stuff. star, most Black death, star, quality, yeah. you know, that's run- the kind of, I'm not really into hip hop, but that's the kind of stuff I like is yeah. that's the more like East coast stuff. Right. Like kind um, of underground. It's like no, no. Remember the, the whole East West? Roots. Like this uh, was before Tupac, Biggie. Well, I, I'm not talking about that necessarily, but there is like a style. You know what I mean? Like underground to me means East Coast mostly. Right. That's just what I think. Um, of. And it's it's funny because like some of the the li- like some of the 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 people that the 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 guys that are rhyming, man, they they put a lot of the pop stars to shame. You know, with their with their intelligence. And with the with the the rhyming styles that they have, and 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 the 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 weight of the songs are so much like deeper than what I could ever thought that it was just you know not not all about hoes and bitches and yeah, yeah. like it's drugs great. and stuff. Like it's yeah. so old. Um, 
you know, and, and that, that in itself, like with behind just a fat hip hop beat, you know, because anybody can play a hip hop beat. It's just what you say, you know, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But still though, I mean, there's still a lot going on there. Like, you know, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. like just the beat alone. Yeah. And like, I mean, it's, you know, it's definitely like deeper than that, but I have to say that I am constantly open to new music. And yeah. I regularly on a weekly because I have a long commute in the morning. Oh yeah, and I download new albums constantly. I've listened to the new Lady Gaga. Did you know nice. Willie Nelson has a new album out? I listened no. to that. I've listened to Kanye West his, his stuff. Yeah, um, the new Flaming Lips just recently. I've listened to every King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Nice. I'm I've um, John Coltrane. And his oh, wife. Yeah. I've been getting into John Coltrane. He just dead. had some NPR. Th- I think it was his, oh, just like his birthday. No, no, he's long gone. Oh, he's dead now. He, right? he was psychedelic, dude. Oh yeah. He, he invented these musical patterns, mm-hmm. and then he his was wife amazing. and yeah. like they channeled shit, dude. Like they were tapped in. Yeah. Um, there was actually a, a an NPR uh, um, document, you know, a story the last couple of days. It was John Coltrane's birthday he would have been like 94 or something and uh there was a uh some people that started a whole religion or or church that was the coltrane something you know church okay and uh they basically heard coltrane once in san francisco and they felt <laughs> like they were touched by god and they made they made coltrane their deity or something. I believe it. And um, ever since then, they they even after Coltrane died, I guess Coltrane gave him the 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 blessings to do this. And after Coltrane died, like they were really in touch with the wife, and the wife was really like uh, they're both musical magical. as well. Yeah, she has some. I'm not. I can't name them, but there's people that are hyper obsessed because they have they have just they have their periods. Like they know they're known for doing this type of music then. And then Ann Coltrane is doing one thing and like, but they were in touch with the source and it, it's, what was that? So, uh, you're talking about Coltrane, obviously Miles Davis. Miles Davis. Bertha too. Cool, right? Didn't he do that? So look at this album cover. Cause he got really into LSD, right? Cause his girlfriend, he, he kind of shared a girlfriend back and forth with Jimi Hendrix. Right? Really? Look at the, Yeah. Yeah. And so one of the songs on there is actually like, he basically ripped off a Jimi Hendrix song. And I think it's like it's uh Miles runs the voodoo down. <laughs> I think it's voodoo child or something like that. But uh yeah, you look at even the artwork back then, like these guys were doing drugs, man. They were yeah. doing acid. Like, I saw I saw some good music. Some movie about Miles Davis. Um and it was it was it was intense, man. <laughs> More cowbell, dude. Yeah. Well, Carlos is it's been a pleasure, man. You'll have to come back again. Yeah, dude. Let's do it again. For That's sure, it. man. Thanks for uh, having me. Um, where do you see yourself in five years? Um, definitely definitely um, happy. Um, work-wise, um, I do like what I'm doing now. I would like to uh, challenge myself maybe and possibly – either move up in my company or possibly find something new. Yeah. Um, I'm always looking for something better. Um, as far as, you know, in five years, I'd like to have a girlfriend, maybe settle down a little bit more, not be such a, you know, a single, single man, always just on my own, have more, have more <laughs> of a settled life with somebody. That's what I'd like. Awesome. Um, just be happy. And still, still be hanging out with you guys. I like that answer. Good. Yeah. So, um, do you have like where can people find you? Do you have anything you want to promote? Um, I, I you know I don't even go on Facebook, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, what's your Good. the dojo? But uh, they can they can try dojo, dojo on YouTube. On YouTube. You on YouTube. Yeah, we're a collective drum and bass. If they like it, man. I love the out. the cars. Yeah, um, so sick in the one background. Of, one the of green our guys, screen. One of our guys, uh, one of our DJs, is a uh, he does he builds uh, sliders. Uh, he drift Slide cars, cars? Oh, drifters, yeah. drift cars, and so his his DJ name is Slider, um, and that's who I used to live with. Okay, yeah, and uh-huh. uh, he uh, 
he, him and Anthony really love the old school um, sliding cars, you know, like Fast and Furious and stuff like that. That's so what it, they, looks like. it looks like a video game or something. Right. Um, yeah. And so they put they put that up on, on the visuals and yeah. on, on you know, behind us and stuff like that. What I like about our collective is that we're we all have different styles. And so you'll never you'll never get the same stuff from one of us. And I think that's pretty pretty unique. You know, a lot of a lot of collectives you'll you'll be like, Wait, who's playing now? Oh, it sounds the same. Or whatever, you know, like that's I like how none of us like bites each other's style we all have such a Compliment. unique style yeah. that we just complement each other not really like bite our st- anybody's style or or we don't fight for tunes or we don't there's no competition it's all like straight up just humble uh creativity you know which has made it such an honor to be part of you know like to be part of a group that doesn't have much of an ego driven um life you know like that's what i like about 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 them and and about anybody that i hang with it's non-ego driven friendships yeah i love the scene like going to the show that one time and like other times even like raves and stuff and like just the coolest fucking like normal people like for the most part like that whole scene that i feel like you're kind of surprised how many people are into this stuff and and how many people go to these parties just like totally normal really nice people like remember when we went to la and we kind of stumbled on that like (laughs) rave almost and they thought i was a dj they thought you were a dj (laughs) they thought i was a famous (laughs) dj and I think I told them I wasn't, but they didn't believe me. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, "Wait, you were like, kept like just looking in there, like, like, what? Oh, we, we were we're like, there. literally, we just came by, and we're just like, I think I bummed a cigarette off him or something. <laughs> yeah, and then I we like looked there, up the like, DJ, yeah, and he was like, I forgot. You know. But anyways, <laughs> hey, it's been a pleasure, man. Thank you, thanks, for Carlos. Me. Um, hopefully, we can do it soon again. We will. Sweet.